If you're looking to building up your home studio kit, you've probably seen quite a few videos by now of all the essential kit you need. But what's never really mentioned is all the kit that you actually don't need. And there are definitely some areas where I'm pretty sure there are areas photographers could be saving a lot of money by avoiding kit that, in my opinion, just isn't necessary. So hopefully you've already seen my video on the kit that you do need for your studio, but today, as promised, I'm gonna be talking about all the kit that you really don't need. Assuming you're using flash studio lights and not constant lighting, you really don't need a super powerful flash. 600 watt seconds is not only absolutely overkill for a lot of purposes, it might even be putting you on a disadvantage in some ways. Personally, I only use 200 watt second lights and that is more than enough for me. I've even seen photographers produce excellent work just with normal speed lights that you normally mount on top of your camera and they're only 64 watt seconds, so power really isn't everything. The main thing I think a lot of photographers forget about is that lights can only have a certain power range and you can only reduce the power of a light by so much. So basically, if you have a higher power light, then its minimum power is also going to be a lot greater. Where this can become a problem is if you want to shoot at super wide apertures to get that narrow depth of field look. Because a wider aperture lets a lot more light in, you basically only don't need nearly as much power to expose your image properly. So if you're using a powerful light that has a quite high minimum power, it might be that you, your light literally cannot go down low enough to shoot at that aperture. And this is talking about an ideal scenario where your light's even capable of going down to quite a low minimum power, such as 256 power. A lot of cheap lights can't even go that far down, and you can only go down to like 1 16th power or 1 over 32 as total power. So if you're buying cheap lights, it's especially important to make sure that you get the wattage that's actually suitable for your needs. Personally, for 99% of my work, I just use two 200 watt second lights, and for that I can shoot all the way at f8, all the way down to f1.8 at its lowest power, just fine, with no problems with recycle times or anything. This is also a much cheaper way to go. For the price of one 600 watt second light, I could get two 200 watt lights plus an adapter to combine the two to get 400 watts if I ever feel that I do need more power. Photography backdrops are pretty expensive and they're one area where I always try and save a lot of money. I've got great results from using cheap alternatives like dust sheets and bed sheets and all, even just bits of card tapes together. <laughs> and even just paper backdrops are a fraction of the price of high quality hand painted canvas backdrops and they give you a super clean studio look for a lot less. And sometimes if it, instead of having to get several different colours you can just get a few colours and then alter the colour in Photoshop afterwards. But if you just want a clean look straight out of camera they require absolutely no work at all in Photoshop. I've got another video coming out soon where I'm going to go into different backdrop alternatives in more detail so keep an eye out for that. Tripods are great if you're a landscape or product photographer but for portrait work you're probably better off saving your money and spending it elsewhere. Ultimately, there are very few tripods out there that are well built and allow you to move around quickly enough between shots to not just be a hindrance and reliable. And if you're worried about camera shake, you need to bear in mind that your flash is always going to light your subject at at least 1 200th of a second anyway, and that's at your max power. If you're using a less than max power, then your light's going to be even faster. So even if you have a little bit of camera shake, that's not necessarily going to show up in your images. So unless you feel the urge to get into self-portraiture, then honestly, I'd save the money to spend on a tripod and get something a lot more helpful, such as a light meter. You're going to get a lot more use out of a light meter than you will out of a tripod at the end of the day. If your budget can't stretch, then there are plenty of good lighting options for a fraction of the cost of lights from big brands like Profoto and Enelcron now. Now don't get me wrong, these lights have their place in the industry, but unless you're a full-time professional working with big budgets, then ultimately they're not really necessary anymore. Godox is a brand that's half the price and still very reliable. Here in the UK, we have a company called Essential Photo that has rebranded the Godox lights to be Pixapro. And basically these are all exactly the same as the Godox lights, but I can get them from a UK based company and if anything goes wrong, I have somewhere to contact if anything goes wrong. And if you don't plan on shooting at a very wide aperture range, like if you only want to shoot around like f5, 6 to f8 and that's it, you can basically just pick a very cheap light up for as little as like 115 quid. Yeah, it doesn't have very wide power options like we are talking about before, so these will only go down to 132 power. So you don't have the massive range like you do on the more expensive light, but it will definitely be good enough for the job. And it will have a built-in transmitter still and give you great results. What you do with the light is a lot more important than the light itself. 
For the majority of studio photography, you're probably going to be shooting around quite a narrow aperture range, from like f5.6 up to f8, maybe f11 if you're doing some beauty work. So you don't really need expensive zoom lenses anymore. And basic kit lenses that come with crop sensor cameras are actually pretty sharp around this aperture range now. So if it were me and I was focusing purely on studio photography rather than outdoor ambient light photography, I'll just get a cheap crop sensor camera and a basic kit lens. This way I have a full zoom range of all the focal lengths I'll need. So let's say you I got an 18 to 200 mil lens and I'm saving a lot of money, which I can then put towards light modifiers and lighting and backdrops and everything else you need. And for a fraction of the cost, and if I was to get the full frame equivalents of these. So an f2.8 zoom lens is always going to be a lot more expensive than these pretty basic kit lenses that come with the crop sensor cameras. At the end of the day, you really won't see a massive performance difference between a full frame and a crop sensor camera, or between a like f2.8 zoom lens and just ignore kit zoom lens. So as you're a pro shooting high-end fashion and editorial work, or maybe beauty work, you really don't need these high-end cameras and lenses. You're better off saving your money and spending it elsewhere. So there you have it. That's my five items that I'd say you really don't necessarily need for getting into indoor studio photography. Studio kit can be pretty expensive and there's a lot more of it than you need if you just plan on shooting outdoors and ambient light. So if this is something you're hoping to get into, then I hope this video has helped you find areas where you can save money and where you should spend money where it really matters. Any questions or comments, just drop them down below and I'll see you next time.